<laughs> so good to really connect with you, Kim. Thank you so much for choosing to be on this podcast. It's really, really, I'm really, really excited about this because I've been following your work for a long yeah. time now. Yes, I've been following it for a long time and it's unique, it's educative, it's inspiring at the same time. Okay, so let me just ask you to tell me or to tell us about yourself. Wow. <laughs> when I hear that question, I'm always like, okay. Like in that where, where do I start from? But the simple way for me, which which um covers who I am really is to say that I am the harmonizer, right? And um, my name is Nkema Fonabo. I am a purpose-driven woman on on a journey to help busy, overwhelmed, and burnt out professionals, executives, entrepreneurs to live a meaningful, wholesome, and productive life across the critical areas of their lives to achieve work-life harmony. So, and this is not something I I just woke up to, right? Mm. Everything. So I remember in 20, 2018, right? Yeah, sorry, 2008, not 2018, 2008, when I started working, before I joined the band. So I, I worked with uh, a consulting firm, which has become Certification Edge now. Yes, so I remember the MD then, he would come to the office, he asked us, what's your purpose in life? You know, that was actually the first time I heard that question. What's your purpose yeah. in life? And I'm like, I don't know, like, what's my purpose? And that was when I started thinking about that deeply. Mm -hmm. I started praying about it deeply. But at that time, it didn't really come to me until 2015, 2016. So 2015, I... I had some personal experiences that kind of um, disrupted my life. Like <laughs> it affected every area of my life and it left me kind of in a very devastated state. I was trying to grasp my life. I was trying to understand why I'm on earth. So imagine a question that someone threw at me to 20, 2008. It took wow. how many years? In 2015, 2016, I think it was around 2017, yeah, that I kind of put thought into that question again, what's my purpose on earth? Because I, at that point when I was in that state, I would call the spiritual director and I will, you know, lament, I don't know why I'm still living. I can't mm -hmm. even think of anything. And they will all draw me back to it. I said, if you want to know why you're on earth, you need to go ask the person that put you on earth mm -hmm. to understand why you're on earth. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I just stopped. I just stopped being sad about the state of my life and I focused on God. Mm -hmm. Prayed, fasted, everything. And I asked, I was asking God one simple question: what's my purpose on earth? And eventually it was revealed to me, like I was in my, in my room and it felt like I was in church, you know, those big screen. Yeah. That people, they always display um, scriptures or when the choirs are singing and all. And I thought it only written to energize and empower people to live meaningful, wholesome and productive life. Wow. And ultimately bring them close to the father's heart wow yes and that was it okay so with self self-discovery self-mastery and of course when when i wrote my book i wanted to call the book the the the, the work-life harmony sorry work-life balance formula and that was also at a point when I started my life coaching journey with Larry Olushola. Mm -hmm. And he said, so I asked him a question then, I'm writing my book and this is what my book is about. 
And he started asking me deeper questions. What do you want people to take out of this book? And I said, I want them to be able to live meaningful, wholesome, and productive life across mm. all the important areas of their lives. And he said, then it's not balance because balance is... Balance is, I'm trying to use the right word he used. I think he said it's an effort in futility. Mm -hmm. That you actually can achieve balance. It's more of harmony, right? Because mm -hmm. the critical areas of our lives, they are different. And there's no way you can apportion the same amount of time and energy resources to them at the same time. But what you are seeking is, is a state whereby there's harmony, even though they are all different, but there's something that you intend to achieve at the end of the day, which is peace, which is happiness, which is fulfillment, and all those things. Is, so you know, like music, right? Yes. There are different tones. Everybody, different people sing um, soprano, tenor, alto, and all of that. But when you bring them together, what you achieve is a harmony. Mm -hmm. For you to be able to achieve melodies, harmony at the end of the day. So basically, and that was when I thought about it. And I said, okay, if this is what I help my people to achieve, then my book shouldn't be the work-life balance formula. It's actually... Mm -hmm. So he asked me to actually go and think about it. And what came to me was the harmonized life, right? So this is just stories. Then wow. I went through a personality assessment. I'm sure you know about the DISC personality assessment. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm, I was done assessing myself, the results came out. I was high on I. So D is dominant. I is influence. S is stability and C is, I think C is compliance or something. Hmm. I realized that my dominant traits were I and S. One is influence and of course the second one, which is S, is stability. And what they call them, what they call people that are high on those two are harmonizers. Wow. <laughs> wow. What a coincidence. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, I found my I found my alter ego. I found my mm -hmm. identity. So this is who I am. I'm the harmonizer. My name is Nkemo Fonabo. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, <laughs> oh my God. I was going to ask you, okay, tell me about what you do. And then the next question I was going to ask you was, because since I've been following you on social media, I've seen that you are always talking about work-life harmony. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, you, you don't use the word or the phrase work-life balance. So I was going to ask you why work-life harmony over work-life balance, which is something that is just out there. Everybody's saying, mm -hmm. oh, I need, I need work-life balance in this, my life. Oh my God, this mm -hmm. is so good. And I just have to say is that when you were talking about your story about... Um, about uh, what happened, how your purpose came to you. That was really inspiring. I felt this kind of tiny burning sensation around my throat. <laughs> That's what happens when I'm getting something really inspiring like that. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that. In fact, I'm going to ask you more about this, okay? Because when we are talking about work-life harmony, mm -hmm. I think it should start from a place where people even know why they're on earth, you know? As in, mm -hmm. I think that would be the first stage. Absolutely. Knowing why you're even on earth, what's going on, before mm -hmm. you know whether you're achieving that harmony in every aspect mm -hmm. of your life, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know you've had your own experience, which is really inspiring. What would you tell somebody else that is trying to figure it out, to get out from that state of, I, I have no idea what's going on with my life, to a place of, hmm, I want to start achieving harmony with everything going on now. Life is beginning to seem exciting. So how do you, how, how do you think somebody can get there? Okay. I have what I call my anchor, right? Mm. And even if anchor is something that holds everything together. So you know about the sheep anchor and all of that. So for me, I will ask you, first question is, what is your anchor and who is your anchor? And if you have read my book, I think it was chapter two of my book, I said spirituality 
as an anchor. So for me, it's my spirituality. Yeah, I love to live life. I love the, the, the beautiful things of life. But then I have also realized that life doesn't come easy. There, there will definitely be challenges. There will definitely be turbulence. There will definitely be disruption. But then who do I go to when life is chaotic? When I find myself in those chaotic, disruptive situations, who do I go to? Where do I go to? And that is God, and that is my faith, and He is my anchor. Yeah. So, anyone, when I think about my life, right, I have gone through a lot of things in this life. And then when people see me, they'll be like, oh, it seems like life is going easy for you. No, it's not easy. I've gone through a lot. I've gone through hell and back. Wow. But then where do I always find my anchor? Where do I find my strength? Where do I find the, the purpose, the passion, the energy? It's in the place of prayer. It's in my relationship with God. So what I will ask the person is, who is your anchor? What is your anchor? Mm -hmm. And... It's only God that can really sort you out when you find yourself in such a situation. Because like I told you, I was busy calling people that I think they are spiritual, they could hear God. Mm. I'll call this pastor, I'll call this priest, and I'll say, this is where I am, and I don't know how to get out of this stuck situation. After every conversation, they will still tell me, go back to your God. Mm. So I will tell you, go back to your God. I don't know what God you serve, but go back to your God. Someone placed you here on earth. So you need to go back to him and know why he wants you in this situation, right? Mm -hmm. He might not be the one that brought, because I don't believe, some people say, oh, God brought this bad situation. God loves us. He might not, he will not want anything bad to happen to us. But sometimes we get ourselves into situations when we are not self-aware mm -hmm. when we make the wrong decisions right mm -hmm. so, but when we find ourselves in such situation the only person that can take you out of that situation is your god is inspiration from god he's the only one that can guide you you know how you talk to him you know how he speaks to you he is the only one that can actually sort you out so that's busy. That's for me. God is my anchor. My spirituality is an area of my life that I don't joke. I don't joke with. Wow. And he always comes true for me. Thank you so much for that. And you know that since this is for African professionals, we as African, mm -hmm. we are big mm -hmm. on spirituality. So it's not something that we hide or something that mm -hmm. you know, we shy away mm -hmm. from. So this is really clear, you know, you know, your anchor. Who is your anchor? Or even what is your anchor? Just mm -hmm. figure it out with your anchor. And I picked something from what you said, and that is nobody will do it for you. Nobody nobody else is coming to tell you, hey, hey, this is what you're going to do with your life. Because mm -hmm. if somebody else is directing your life, at a point, if you're frustrated, and when things go wrong, you're going to blame the person for what's going on in your life. <laughs> so <laughs> it's best you figure it out yourself with your anchor. Mm -hmm. Right? Thank you so much. And then I, I I peeked a little into your book and I saw where you were talking about um what are those two words? Um happiness and achievement. No, no, that's um enjoyment, achievement and enjoyment. Yes, <laughs> achievement and enjoyment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think you were talking about um to achieve if if you want to describe what work-life harmony is for you. It has to have these two things. Mm -hmm. And some enjoyment, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> so can, you, can you tell us more about that? Because I like the word enjoyment. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. You know, every, everyone is talking about the soft life now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to live a soft life. Yeah, a soft life is a life of pleasure, enjoyment, and the likes. But I tell you the truth, you need you need money to sponsor a soft life. Tell me about travel. it. You can't travel to Las, Las Vegas with zero zero account balance. Oh my <laughs> god. Sorry, let me just hold you there. 
Do you know something happened recently? I traveled to Qatar recently and it was economy that I flew. I, the, throughout that journey, I was so frustrated. Like mm -hmm. I was tired of sitting. I needed, I needed bigger space to relax. I will stand up, I will sit. Like I wasn't just comfortable. I was like, oh my God, because God, is this a sign that next time I should try the business class? Wow. <laughs> so, so now you're talking about money. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that is it so you can you can have a life of a, a, a life of enjoyment without a life of achievement mm. right so if you look at the 12 critical areas of life let me let me try and list them for you so you have the you have your home and family that's one you have your maybe relationship and marriage that's one you have um, your career, um, business, whatever it is that you do. That's three. Then you have maybe your finances, your wealth. Four. You have five, friendship, social network. That's six. You have your purpose, your passion, your energy, whatever you call it, six. Sorry. Yeah, six. Yeah, six, yeah. You have, yeah, you have um, rest, recreation, fun. That's seven. You have your spirituality, you have your wellness. So wellness could be spiritual, it could be physical, it could be emotional. You have wellness, you have um, success and achievement. Mm -hmm. You have success and achievement. You have, um, there's a particular one that I've missed. <laughs> there's a particular one that I've missed. Anyway, so success and achievement is an area, an important area of life, is a critical area of life. And what that speaks to is, of all of these areas of your life, what are the investments you are making in these areas of your life? Are you achieving the goals that you set out to achieve? Are you successful? What does success mean to you? Because you have to, first of all, define what success means to you. But by and large, <clears throat> achievement means that you are doing what you are expected to do. So you cannot be jobless and want to be flying business class, first class, except you have someone who is who is doing the work and then sponsoring you. Yeah. Do you understand? So it's all it's it's just for us to make people understand that you have to work for it. You have to work for that life that you desire. If you want to live your best life, you want to enjoy your life, you still have to work for it. It's mm. not about preaching hard work. Sorry, it's not about preaching suffering. But doing what you are supposed to be, being ambitious, right? And doing the work. Have that vision, but do the work that will enable you to, you know, live your dream. Mm -hmm. So when you do the work, so nobody tells you. So let's assume I just resumed my a new job, right? I can't start now to start asking them, oh, I want to go on vacation. Yeah. I have to do the work. I have to prove my words before they would even confirm me, oh, they said, oh, this person fits our culture in terms of my performance and everything. That's where achievement comes. I have achieved something. I have achieved that I belong here. Hmm. Then probably after three months or six months, I can ask my, my line manager, say, I want to go on vacation. They won't blink an eye to approve my vacation. So I can decide to travel the world mm -hmm. and go and enjoy the life that I want. So that's one way to explain it, that you can have a life of enjoyment if you haven't worked for it. So mm -hmm. do the work first, then rest will come. The enjoyment will come, the fun will come. So basically, yes. <laughs> okay, so what you're trying to say is that what you're preaching is not for lazy people. It's not for lazy people at all. <laughs> See me that wants to just be a house. Life harmony is not for lazy people. <laughs> hey, <laughs> not at all. Hmm. Okay, because that's really nice. <laughs> that's really nice. That means I need to work more so that this is my first class uh, lifestyle would yes, arrive so. really fast. Yes, so. In fact, I wrote I wrote in my goal goal affirmation as in mm. every day I affirm it. I said. Um, I fly I fly business and first class for all my trips, both locally and internationally. And I'm yeah. working for it. 
Yes. I'm working for it. Mm. No more economy. Mm. Mm. I'm tapping into this goal, though. In fact, we are sharing this goal. You know? I'm not kidding. I'm we are sharing it. this goal. Well, I'm not kidding. Seriously. You know that you, you talked about the 12 um critical areas of life. Mm -hmm. And while you are listing all these things, I start feeling a little bit anxious. You know why? <laughs> you know why? Because, come on, we are just one. As in, like, I'm just one person. You're just one person. But then mm -hmm. there's these various demands for mm -hmm. us to achieve or to achieve the goals in these different areas. But then you realize that, you talk about work-life harmony. You realize that we commit most of our lives at the workplace, like in mm -hmm. a 24 hours. For some people work eight hours, some people work even more. Not to talk yeah. about the time you, you put in in commuting to work and back, you know? Mm -hmm. So you realize that most of your life is at work in a 24 hour, except weekend, of course. Even, even mm -hmm. some people work on Saturdays. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at it, how will somebody be able to give attention to all of these, especially when you're in a workplace where your workplace is not just giving you that time or is not recognizing you as a person, but just an employee that has to just do the work and go home. Okay, so hmm. how do one human being be <laughs> present? <laughs> I'm serious. Be present for these 12 critical areas of your lives without losing it. Well, that's that's a, a very important question. And it's is a state where every one of us we've been. I am currently in one. I just started a new a new job and it feels like all my life is this job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then you have to be intentional. So that's why I said work life harmony it's a deliberate practice even in my book i mentioned what the harmonized life deliberate practices for winning in life and work so you have to be deliberate you have to be intentional to invest in these important areas of your life so but you need to first of all identify these areas when mm -hmm. you identify them the first thing you ask yourself is what is most important so it's first you start with, your, with an assessment of what is important. And then they are all important. So the <laughs> answer is that they are all important. Like mm -hmm. I, that's why I call critical areas of life. They are all important. Your home and family is important, right? Your relationship and marriage is important. Because if you don't build on this, if you don't intentionally invest in this area of life, it will affect that work that you yeah. so much cherish. Your health and wellness is important because if you are ill, there is little or nothing you can do. Your productivity will be zero. Yeah. Your energy mm -hmm. will be depleted, right? Your money, your finance, your wealth is important because what are you working for? If you don't, mm -hmm. if you can't show, if you can't show for it, if you have mm -hmm. nothing to show for it, rather, mm -hmm. right? It's very important. Your self-esteem, that's what that's the word, the other one that I missed. Your okay. self-esteem and confidence is important because what do you bring to the, the table really? It's who you are and, mm -hmm. and the worth that you assign to yourself. So mm -hmm. if I don't believe that I deserve this job, even my employer will not hire me. Mm -hmm. So I need to show that hey, I'm worth this job. I need to, mm -hmm. you know, so my confidence when I enter a room. Do I believe in myself or I start looking at others as if they are, oh, they are high up there and I'm here, right? Fun, recreation, because these are the ways that we decompress from stress. I'm just mm -hmm. mentioning this area so we can, you can begin to think of how can I invest in these areas? Fun, mm -hmm. recreation, it's important to go out. Let me give you an example. Throughout the week, I wasn't feeling well. Okay. I was. I knew that I was not okay, but then a friend of mine comes into town, calls me. Let's go out. Let's hang out. And all through the week, I was thinking of I need to go to the hospital. I need to go to the hospital. But just Friday and today, I've been out having fun. I don't even feel mm -hmm. that way anymore. Wow. I don't even feel element of sickness anymore. So you need to have fun. You need to recreate, mm -hmm. and you need to rest. 
if you're not getting as an adult if you're not getting up to six minimum of six hours in a day then something is wrong yeah. then your work your career your business it, they're all important. It's a way of you fulfilling your purpose. It's a way of you adding value to humanity. Mm -hmm. Then friendship and social network. I always tell people that if it's not my friends, if it's not my network, I'm not sure I would have been where I am. Mm -hmm. I got the job that I have now because of friendship, because of network, mm -hmm. right? Then energy, passion, and power. So that's 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 also another area of life. If I wasn't passionate about what I'm doing, you wouldn't have known me. Yeah. Hello, you wouldn't have known me. But I believed in this thing so much. I'm so passionate about it that I don't want it to end with me. God mm -hmm. gives us our purpose for others, not for yourself. Yeah. So if I'm somewhere hiding, I didn't intentionally build my visibility so that I can communicate my passion to humanity, to people, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. My spirituality and security, I can't joke with it. My God is <laughs> everything, yeah. right? And then success and achievements. And then the 12th one is peace and contentment. Because when you have invested deeply into all these areas of life, the result you get is that sense of contentment, peace of mind, harmony, okay? So mm -hmm. on a daily basis, how can you invest in these areas of your life so that you feel a sense of apologies, mm -hmm. so that you feel a sense of peace, contentment, harmony? So you have a family, right? Whether you are married or not, you have your family your your family right your parents your siblings how do you invest in them like if i say a whole day i don't call my parents sorry whole week let me not say whole week, but a whole week i don't call my parents i feel like what are you working for mm -hmm. right because these people are my life so i make i'm always very intentional even if oh i'm not living with them i'm seven thousand miles away from them I call them, I find out how they are doing. Even if it's just a message that you drop, yeah. how are you doing? You show they are okay. Your families, your siblings, ensure that they are okay. You are creating time for them. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do, well, I used to set reminders on my phone to call my parents, to call my siblings. Yes, it might not be every day. But when people see that they are intentional about you, I have a sister that like, every single day she calls me. She was like, I have not heard from you. What's going on? What's... She will call me. Sometimes she'll be like, oh, I feel bored. I just want to talk to you. Hmm. Because they know that you're so intentional about them. My mom will be like, I can't, can I stay a whole day and a whole week I've not heard from you. Are you okay? She will call me like three times. My didn't pick. She will be worried. Like, what's mm -hmm. going on? So what are you doing? How are you making time for these people that are a part of you? So that goes to, of course, you calling your children. If you are married and you have a, you have children, you have a spouse. Mm -hmm. How are you intentional about investing in their lives? What are mm -hmm. they doing? How are you supporting them? People mm -hmm. have their love languages. What is their love language? Are you speaking their love language, right? Mm -hmm. Then we move to relationship and marriage. If you are married, if you are in a relationship, are you investing in that relationship? Because this work that we are all fighting for, one day an employer will wake up and say, we do disengagement in the office. Yeah. We know how painful it can be. Mm -hmm. An employer will wake up and tell you, oh, your role is no longer important. We are restructuring and we don't need your services anymore. You have to go back to that wife that you are not taking care of or that husband that you were not paying attention to his needs. Do you True. think do you think he will be emotionally available to to take care of you in that emotionally devastating state that you are in at that point in time? That would be difficult. Yeah. Exactly. So, how are you investing in that area of your life? Your health and wellness. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's an area of life that every day people ask me, you look this young, what are you doing? Like my my eating has, habit has changed drastically. 
Mm. You know, at work, people will be like, I'll tell you, I don't eat this. I don't eat that. People will be like, so what do you eat? I eat the things. Someone was telling me, I can't remember, someone in my office, and I was telling her all the things I eat. And I was like, she was like, this one you are eating as if you don't want to die. Please, me. <laughs> 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 you eat all of these things. I say, yes. Not like I don't want to die, but I want to live long. Yeah. And I want to live a very quality life. Mm. So it, it's not just physical. It's also emotional. What energies are you are you connected with? Because mm -hmm. energy is very powerful. I realized recently that maybe before now, I used to be very, I used to get very overwhelmed. I used to worry a lot. I have cousins that call me drama queen. I used to worry a lot. But then I realized that it's not helping me, right? Mm -hmm. When I worry, is it that I get angry? But there was an incident that happened to me one time with, you know, this handyman and all. I came to my house and I told him not to do something. I was okay. I was fine. But because he did something that I told him not to do, I was angry. I was shouting at him. You wouldn't mm -hmm. believe it. I started having pain instantly. Okay. I started having pain instantly. Mm -hmm. And I knew that it was just because of my reaction, that negative energy. Mm -hmm. So I try. So these days I don't get angry easily. It's not because, oh, things don't, don't trigger me. But I'm in control mm -hmm. because I'm now self-aware that these are the things that trigger me. These are the things that cause me negative energy, which also affect my health. I try to control it. Yeah. But one yesterday at work, I got one SMS that I was like, oh my God, what is this? By the time I showed my colleague in the office, he was like, Kim, you're so calm. <laughs> if it's me that received this kind of message, I would have stormed out of the office, do this, that. I said, no. <laughs> I don't need that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about wellness. How are you intentional about your your mental, your physical, mm -hmm. your spiritual well being? So let me quickly go to spirituality. Mm -hmm. Some people wake up in the morning and they zoom out of the house, mm -hmm. and I feel like it. This is this is a time bomb. Like I don't think I can wake up and leave the house without praying without spending at least one hour meditating praying mm. so recently i think sometime last year i i always of course study my scriptures and i have a book where i write down things and mm. god told me one day i said i don't want you to keep this thing in your book alone i want you to start sharing it wow mm -hmm. you know so if you go to my facebook you see where i write after my meditation, I just put just a summary and mm -hmm. then a prayer. If I tell you the impact of that, you wow. won't believe it. Some people will call. I have people that will be like, okay, it's as if you are speaking to my needs today. I don't know mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But this is what I do every day. Where do I get the time? Of course, I created an hour. I wake up 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I spend one hour reading my scripture, praying, and also sharing that message with others. Mm -hmm. So I'm also feeding their soul. And that's how I'm committing to my passion, my purpose. Remember my purpose. Ultimately, bring them close to the Father's heart. Yeah. So whatever it is you do, it's success. Success is multidimensional. It could be mm -hmm. one thing you are doing, but the impact is... You can feel the impact in the other areas of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not a pastor. I'm not nothing, but it's just my way of connecting to my spirituality, connecting to mm -hmm. my God. Do you understand? And mm -hmm. then your work. Some people treat their work with levity. I'm not that type of person that treat my work with levity. I mm -hmm. give it my best. Like I give it my best, you know? When I resumed this work, it was it was a whole lot. My friends would be like, Kim, you don't have time for us again. I say, please understand that this is a new job and mm -hmm. I need to put it in place. I need to prove yeah. my work. And every day I pray, I ask God for that's that's excellence in whatever mm -hmm. it is that I do. 
You ask God for excellence in whatever it is. So put in your best in your work. Mm. If you put in your best in your work, it will impact your finances. Mm -hmm. Because your employer will see you, oh, you're doing this, you're you are going above and beyond. They will promote you. They will recognize the work you're yeah. doing. It's more money for you, right? Mm -hmm. One month of working in my organization, this is your, I got a recognition just one month, you know? So do your best, exceed expectation, right? Mm -hmm. And the money will come. But then what do you do with the money? So that's another question you ask yourself because you need that area to grow. What do you do with the money? Are you investing it? Are you creating, are you multiplying that mm -hmm. money that you are earning? Are you planning it well or you are just, oh, the money is there. Let me leave. Let so me keep leave. coming. <laughs> account yeah. for it i've made my mistakes like i've made my own financial mistake but we learn every day yeah so that is it then your friends your your social network how are you investing in that area of your life hmm. i make it a point of duty to connect with my friends call them keep in touch care about them because when you care about them they will people will these things are energy. They will reciprocate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They will, it will come back to you. A few months ago, I wasn't feeling well. My mom was around, nursed me to take care of me. And she was, she was overwhelmed with the amount of support I got from my friends. And when she was leaving, she said, I know, I know I'm leaving you in good hands. You are blessed wow. with friends. You are blessed with friends. So aside my friends, my family, <laughs> those 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 are my wealth i call them my wealth really mm -hmm. so what are you doing intentionally so i don't have to see them every day i don't have to see my family every day i don't have to see my friends every day but mm -hmm. how are you investing in their own life because when you invest in theirs they will definitely yeah. invest in yours they will reciprocate yes so what other area have i missed so it's not an everyday wow. thing so that's why i said it's not balanced but mm -hmm. it's important that you understand what is important at every point in time mm -hmm. and then make sure that you are intentionally investing in those things that are important mm -hmm. basically it's not an everyday thing that you have to sit down and say oh okay today it has to be this it has to be that mm -hmm. so I'm working now. Um, I haven't gone on vacation for a long time, but it doesn't have. You don't have to travel the world for you to yeah. for you to have yeah. fun. I told you last night. It was it was in the same. It was just in the simple things. It was mm -hmm. all the, the company, the fun, the conversation, mm -hmm. and what you do that create fun. It doesn't have to be expensive, really. I'm sure we didn't spend up to 100,000. We didn't even spend up to 50,000. But we had fun. We enjoyed each other's company. So these are really important things. I've, wow. I've spoken about spirituality, so let me not dwell so much on that. At the end of the day, if you are investing in all these areas, it will the impact will show in your success and achievement if you define what success means to you. Because a lot of people... Define success as, oh, I have wealth, I have money, I have 100 cars, or I live in Banana Island. You have to define what success means to you. And when you define it and understand it, you'll be able to know when you are actually living that life. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if you are indeed doing the things you are supposed to do, Investing in these areas of your life, you will feel it's a you will be in a state of contentment, you will feel at peace, and mm -hmm. that for me is what harmony is all about. Wow. <laughs> As you are talking, I, I went through three different emotions. One of them is like impressive, but three different experiences. One of them was I felt inspired. Yeah, I got the same niggly feeling around my throat. And then the mm -hmm. second one was wow 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 but do you know what the third one was <laughs> it was like okay okay you don't catch me i know you don't catch me <laughs> oh my god you spoke on so many so many things that i need to revisit i don't know it's, it seemed like you were talking to me i don't know about the listeners but 
you are talking to me at some point, especially in regards to relationships with people, family, friends. Whoo! <laughs> let me not let me not wash my dirty linens in public. <laughs> I know. <laughs> thank I you know. so much. Yeah, thank you so much for for these detailed explanations. You mm -hmm. know. As you were talking, I was transformed just by the things you were saying. I was already transformed. I was already noting the things I'm going to do moving forward. You know, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So you're just going to do two things, okay, mm -hmm. before we conclude. One of them is just one word you're going to give for somebody that is listening or somebody that wants to achieve the work-life harmony. Just something very simple. And then the second thing, you're going to tell us more about this book because... <laughs> this <laughs> I saw the book, I think it's 200 and something pages. Yes, I actually have it here, so let me check. <laughs> I'm not <Okay>. sure anymore. <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. It's actually, yes, 285. <laughs> 285. 285. And I only I only I only flipped through the first few, is it the first chapter or first two chapters? Mm -hmm. And I was already getting like wealth of knowledge that are really helpful i just love how practical you write you know mm -hmm. you make it really relatable it's not like highfalutin things that people just that or just theories for us to figure it out you make it really mm -hmm. easy to relate to you know so what word are you going to give to a listener that is aiming to achieve um work like harmony okay I will still take you back to the subtitle of my book, Deliberate Practices for Winning in Life and Work. So the summary really is for us to be intentional, to be deliberate. Identify what is truly important to you. You have to, you have to identify, look at the critical areas of your life. And the first place is for you to begin to assess yourself. Where am I? in those areas of your life when you understand your current state the next question you ask yourself is what is my desired state when you find your desired state you'll be able to see the gap hmm. next action is to intentionally begin to invest in those areas of your life that will begin to do the things take actions begin to do the <laughs> things that will enable you to move from your current state to your desired state mm. and i am here for you really if you if any one of our listeners um, need any form of support mm. to walk through the journey because it's it's also not something we do alone i didn't do yeah. it alone i'm <laughs> I not, I'm not self-made <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> self I had i had mentors i had friends if I didn't go through the coaching program, I wouldn't have known as much as I. And even after the coaching program, I still had to, you know, sign up some mentorship with Landry. Mm -hmm. And I have other people that I see that are living my desired life. And mm -hmm. I had to, you know, get close to them because I am being intentional. So be intentional about your life. Mm -hmm. I remember someone calling me recently and saying, Kim, I'm so proud of you. I know this person knows me even when I was not in a HR space and all the efforts I put into moving into this space. I will call him, I will cry, there's nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm just so glad that you eventually, eventually in a short space, you achieve that dream of yours. You are really intentional, you are deliberate and I'm so proud of you. So. All I would say is be intentional. Understand where you are. Don't see yourself as a failure. Whatever you feel right now is is valid. I I feel you. Even if you feel stuck, I was once there. And understand where you want to be. And if you need help, I'm always there to support you to get to your desired state. So basically, then about my book. Yes. I have yeah. an I I poured everything in here. I poured everything in here. Wow. Uh, when I receive feedback from people, sometimes I'm, I'm like, I wrote this book, really. Sometimes <laughs> some feedback actually shocks me. I'm telling you the truth. Some feedback. My own brother told me that this, my book, 
that he can attribute his success story to this book of mine. And I'm like, I shed a tear wow. the day he told me that. He said, yes. You know, so I'm feeling emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that's all right. That's yeah, all right. I'm feeling emotional at this point in time, but I put it all in this book. And uh, all I can say is go grab it. If you are in Nigeria, you can go to walk into any Robin Heights bookstore. They are in Abuja and they are in Lagos. You can also order through my website and you have access to it. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's also on Amazon. So my website, yes, it's yeah, absolutely. It's also on Amazon, Amazon. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure you got yours from Amazon. I'll get the paper, the paper back. And awesome. I need to print it here. Awesome. So it's on Amazon, yes. Thank you. So my website is just www.chemoconapple.com. I'll still I'll still put it in the description. I'll put it awesome. there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you awesome. so much. You, you 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 when you see people, you don't even realize what they carry, like mm. the wealth of knowledge, experience, mm. insights, insights that they carry. You're mm. just one person that's inspired me today. And just mm. from you speaking, I've even picked up um actionable stuff to do to mm -hmm. be honest so and I, I i know that people that will listen to you will mm -hmm. still get more so thank you so much for shining your light <laughs> thank you thank you for having me i really appreciate thank you for joining me all right enjoy the rest of your day and you too yeah bye